how many times have you had issues with interoperability between different programming languages basically creating applications with different programming languages the compilation time the run time the way you compile the way you deploy the way you run stuff it's always a overhead when you have different programming languages because the way you compile and run is completely different from different languages let's look at how the open source community along with oracle is trying to solve this particular problem of interoperability between different programming languages let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers graal vm is a completely polyglot virtual machine if you have worked on the jvm languages you know what is a virtual machine the java virtual machine is nothing but the jvm however with graal vm oracle and the open source community is trying to create a universal vm or a polyglot vm using which you can run applications which could be designed in different programming languages like java javascript python ruby r and also with languages such as c and c++ additional to that it supports the jvm languages like scala java kotlin and clojure because these are going to anyway create the jars so graal vm is a project which is aimed at polyglot so there will be zero overhead in interoperability between programming languages and it allows you to write polyglot applications so what do i mean by polyglot applications you can write an application with different languages and they will be running the same vm for example calling javascript from java or calling c++ from javascript etc so how does graal vm achieve it graal vm compiles the code into a native image and it runs code in that particular vm with that particular native image if you had seen what java used to provide is java used to provide this concept of compile once and then run anywhere right and that concept is going away because most of the time we are all running applications in linux based environments and linux based containers for example docker right in order to make things faster in order to make applications load faster and use interoperability between different programming languages we will have to sacrifice something or the other and the sacrifice which we are giving here is the concept of build once and then run in any platform right so just in time compiler used to convert our byte code into the machine understandable code based on the particular machine right however now we are going to create a native image specifically for a particular machine and we are going to run these images faster than before by leveraging this native image concept so let's try experimenting the graal vm by running a java project and a c++ project in the same vm right in order to do that you will have to uh, download graal vm and install it in your machine i don't have docker right now so you can also use docker to um, have a container created and then run it from there unfortunately the docker the latest docker version doesn't support my version of mac because it's pretty old so i'm going to use the google cloud platform in order to use the docker image so i'm going to use the cloud shell if you had seen my kubernetes videos you would have uh, seen what is cloud shell i'll just brief out what is cloud shell cloud shell is a shell prompt created for a specific user if you are using the google cloud platform so you can have docker you can have g, uh, g cloud you can have java installed in this particular space so i'm going to use it for my purpose so this is a compute which is created for a login which you have under google cloud platform so i'm going to use this particular cloud shell for uh, this particular demo so i'm going to try and use a docker image of the graal vm and log into the docker image and then see what are the different versions and we will create a spring boot application and run it in graal vm so we already created a spring boot application as a part of previous videos i'm going to use the same spring boot application so which is called spring boot lazy in it example i also have created a folder called graal vm right now there is nothing in it because i don't need anything there so let's do a clear if you don't have a google cloud account and still want to try it out you can go to the github account of the graal vm team so it's github.com slash graal vm and you can use the graal vm from there so if you go to the documentation and say get started 
or in fact if you say try J, uh, try graal vm there is a there are some steps on how you can download for example navigate to the downloads option if i click on it you can download this from github i'm going to use the community edition but if you want to use the enterprise edition you can go ahead and use it i'm going to click here the enterprise edition is free for evaluation you cannot use software which you can sell via the enterprise edition however you can use the community edition for that particular purpose i am going to use the same community edition see this this particular version got released 12 days ago and it's pretty much a new concept so it's not production ready for supporting full fledged enterprise applications but it is in the testing phase right now so you can download the package here so i have downloaded the zip from here for my local mac but i'm not going to show that particular example i'm going to show from the cloud shell so in order to use this in the cloud shell i'm not going to download the project from github instead i'm going to use the docker image provided by the graal vm team so that i have a docker container running with the graal vm and i can try out stuff there right so i'm going to do that so let me get the command for uh, doing it so if you want to pull the image you can do a docker pull and give this particular um, image url the oracle graal vm ce 1.0 so whenever we run the docker run command it's going to check if the image is present locally if not it's going to pull the image dynamically so that's what is happening here i don't have the image locally present in my cloud shell so it's downloading it on the fly right now so the docker run it and the image and i'm saying that log into the docker container once it has downloaded run the container and log in to me using the bash shell so this is what will happen so let's wait for the download to complete and let's log into the docker container the download is complete now and the image is going to be processed and you can see that now we are in the bash mode so this is basically the docker container which we have see that there is no host name because we don't have the packages installed nothing is installed there right it's just a basic lightweight image here i'm going to see if there is a java version and let's do java hyphen version notice that it uses open jdk and also it says open jdk graal vm ce the community edition and rc16 release candidate 16 so that is what we did so we use the docker image of the graal vm ce the community edition and that's what we are under right same way um, as i said when you install graal vm you will get all the different polyglot languages so we have the java version we also will be having the c version so in order to use the c version we use the lli so LLI is another VM where you can run C and C++ code. So you can use uh, LLI to compile and run C and C++ applications and see that that is also supporting the Graal VM. So it, Graal VM brought all these and it has its own native installation. Same with the node version. So I, I'll do a node hyphen V node sorry node hyphen v this should give the node version so obviously node also got installed so we can run javascript we can run c plus plus we can run java as well now in order to test this particular graal vm to check the interoperability let's create a graal vm image of the spring boot application so right now this particular image only provides graal vm but I want to create a Docker image with Graal VM as the base image and I want to provide a Spring Boot application in that particular image. Let's try doing that. So let's go to the home. I already have the Spring Boot lazy init example. I'm going to use the same. Um, if you want to see the source code of this particular Spring Boot lazy init example, head to github.com slash trek primers. So you will find the Spring Boot lazy init example there. So this is the example it has a spring boot application with just one rest endpoint called lazy that's it nothing big right i'm going to use the same previously we used this particular example for deploying uh, the spring boot application into kubernetes cluster i'm going to use the same checked out version which we uh, had before and i'm going to create a docker image with the graal vm image so when we deploy to kubernetes we created a basic linux container with the java runtime with the spring boot application However, here in our case, we are going to use the Graal VM runtime and no Java version because Graal VM brings everything together. So let's create a Docker file for that. So I'll create a Docker file. I have the content already ready and I'll just explain what it does. 
the base image is the GraalVM image that's what the from statement signifies add is nothing but what are the scripts artifacts which we need to add into the docker image we are going to add our spring boot application which is present under the target so when we build this particular image so it's going to go to target folder locally and get the spring boot jar and then rename it as spring boot dot jar and also the container is going to expose the port 8080 so that spring boot application which runs on the 8080 port can map it to the 8080 port directly also the entry point is nothing but the script which we want to run when the container comes up which is nothing but jar java hyphen jar and then the spring boot jar that's how we typically start a java application which has a spring boot embedded in it so that's all we wanted uh, let's save this so in order to build the docker image we will do docker build and we need to provide the name of this particular docker image which we are going to build right let's call it as spring boot gralvm and let's pass the path of the docker file so which is present in the current inside the current directory so it looks like i missed the t option hyphen t is the image tag basically i will say hyphen t and i'll do an enter so this should build a image with the definition of the docker file see that the steps are getting executed step one is nothing but creating a base image adding the artifacts and then exposing the port 8080 and also creating an endpoint when the container is up so we have the image created successfully see that this is the image name spring boot graal vm colon the latest right because that's what we built we did not provide a tag so it builds the latest tag now in order to bring this particular image up we will say docker run hyphen p we need to expose the port 8080 so that's what i'm doing exposing the port 8080 of the current machine map that to the 8080 of the container the docker container and i'll provide the uh, name of our image so this is going to bring the gralvm up and the docker and the spring boot application will be running inside and this is using the plain vanilla gralvm so we did not do any customization over it and it is bringing our application just like that right so let's see what's happening so the application came up with the port 8080 let's try accessing it i can uh, access it directly let's try that from here so this will directly take us and access the spring boot application on the port 8080 see that uh, we got the error message of the spring boot ex um, application and there is a url called lazy and see that we are getting hello prime tech primers that's what we did and we can see the log getting printed con constructor loaded right it's a lazy uh, in it so the constructor loaded with, will come when we hit the first test endpoint so it looks like the graal vm is working with our java application so basically a spring boot application which we built long back it's able to reuse the same jar file and it's running on the same graal vm without any change so i just killed the docker container now let's try running a c program inside this particular graal vm image so in order to do that i'm going to use the same uh, image which we logged in right initially the docker run so i'm logged in let's do a clear so I'm inside the container where we had uh, LLI hyphen hyphen version. We had the LLI with the version of GraalVM. Now let's try creating a hello world program. Obviously that's what we do. We'll do a hello world.c. If you remember, we used to do hash include std io.h and we have a int main. I want to do a print. We'll do a printf hello youtube we need to do a return we'll just do a return of zero just to be intact that's it now we need to compile this particular c language code in order to do that we can leverage the c lang so c lang is present inside the same image so we can do a c lang hyphen c hyphen o1 and emit llvm so we are saying that use the llvm and create a object file based on what we can run on the llvm so it's basically converting the c code into a object file which can run on the llvm that's what we're doing here and let's provide the hello world.c so this is going to create a file here let's see what it created so it created a hello world.bc right so we are inside the gralvm docker container and it created a hello world.bc now in order to run the llvm dot bc file 
we can just say LLI and hello world dot BC that's it so see that it printed hello YouTube that's what we did right so if I want to change again I'll just try doing VI I'll just rename it as tech primers I'll also add a backslash n so that we can see it I'll compile it using the C lang again and I'll run it using LLI again so see that hello tech primer got printed and we are using the same graal vm so what we did here we created bit code from the hello world.c by creating a hello world.bc so dot bc is a bit code and which can be run in a lli vm that's what we did here so lli is a lightweight high performance interpreter which is integrated with the graal vm which runs on lli vm right so lli is nothing but the con command line interface which is an interpreter which converts and runs the native Graal VM runtime. If you want to try out the JavaScript, there is a JavaScript console as well. See this, there is a console.log. If I do hello YouTube, this will just print the hello YouTube. This is again a, J a Graal VM console for the JavaScript. So if you create a JavaScript, again it runs on the same Graal VM. So you don't have to have a specific node or any installation separately. So this is how you can use Graal VM and run different interoperable languages with the same VM and we are running inside the same Docker container using the Graal VM native image. I hope you found this particular concept interesting. It's a completely polyglot VM which you can try for different languages including Ruby and R. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.